CS2 is out, so let's get to an optimization guide. This video will show you how to get the best input latency, the best FPS possible, and the most stable gameplay on your system. Do note that we're not going to jump into Windows optimization. Instead, you'll find guides for those in the description down below for Windows 10, 11, and NVIDIA, as well as anything else related. So for now, we'll head straight into CS2. So starting on the main menu, we'll head across to Settings, followed by Video. Here we'll want the display mode to be set to full screen and nothing else. This will give you the best possible performance. Refresh rate should match your monitor or at least be the highest number you have here. In my case, 165. Your resolution should be your monitor's actual resolution. Otherwise, if you're playing 4x3 stretched, the best possible 4x3 resolution, etc. You probably know what's going on here though. That's really it for this page. If you're on a laptop, you may see laptop power savings. You can enable or disable it here. Obviously, disabling this will use much more power, but you'll get much better performance in game. As for color mode, you can choose between computer monitor and television. You should get much better color reproduction and accuracy on computer monitor. Now we'll head across to the advanced video tab. Now this I think is absolutely wonderful. You can move around this crosshair here and you can look at different parts of the image, zooming in to see the better quality by scrolling up and down, etc. This is an incredible feature and I wish more games had it. Anyways, let's start with the options here. First of all, boost player contrast. This should absolutely always be set to enabled. Even if you don't think it does anything, it should make it easier to see players and enemies while you're playing the game. Wait for vertical sync should be disabled unless you're on a weird refresh rate screen that's especially on the lower end. If you find that you're getting screen tearing, this is something you may need to enable. But for most people, leave this disabled and it should give you much improved input latency. Then as for preset, we'll start at high and work our way down. It doesn't really matter. Multi-sampling anti-aliasing, you should set this to 2x MSAA and that's pretty much it. You can disable it entirely, but this does result in some jagged edges, which don't show in the bottom, but they do show in the top, especially on lines, etc. If you set this to 2x MSAA, you should see most of those disappear with very little performance impact. Then global shadow quality. Now this is a weird one for CS2. Previously it didn't matter in CSGO, but for now players actually cast shadows in real time. So this is something you absolutely need to have enabled and turn to high for the best gameplay experience, even if it costs you FPS. This should be the absolute last setting you'd lower if you're really clawing for FPS. It is a competitive advantage. Model texture, this really doesn't matter. You can set this on low for the best performance. Shader detail, the same goes for this here, set this to low, and particle detail, you can comfortably lower this as well. You can see the smoke in the background here is a little bit easier to see through on low versus high for example. This isn't just a placebo, it is easier to see through smoke and things like that in certain situations with particle detail set to low. So it's a competitive advantage, not just that it boosts your FPS as well. Then ambient occlusion has to do with shadows cast by objects, for example this person and this car here. If I turn it from medium to disabled, you'll notice that quite a few of the shadows disappear and there's not so much shadow on the wall. This could be somewhat considered a competitive advantage, but it's nowhere near as obvious as hard shadows cast by players on floors and walls from the global shadow quality here. You can leave this on medium or disable it. High dynamic range, if you have this option, you should set it to performance. Then finally, Fidelity FX Super Resolution. You can enable this for much better performance, but for example, if you push this to performance, it's going to really lower the quality of your game and make things very weird. It is going to give you a huge boost in FPS, however. If you need this on, have it set to the options closer to ultra quality and quality. Having it on disabled is the absolute best for visibility, but of course it is going to use the most processing power technically. If you need it enabled, leave it on ultra quality or quality. Finally, NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. If your GPU band in your system, make sure that this is enabled. If you are CPU band, as in you have a much slower CPU than GPU, set this to enabled plus boost. This should give you much better improved input latency for your game, assuming you're using NVIDIA hardware. If you don't have this option, don't worry. The only thing you may want to change here is high dynamic range. If you have this enabled on performance, you may notice flickering, especially around moving objects. 
If you set this to quality, that flickering is likely going to vanish. It's your preference, and it has very little FPS impact. Now that we're done with the in-game options, there's nothing else we need to do but close the game here and head across to our NVIDIA control panel. So we'll right-click our desktop and choose NVIDIA control panel. Obviously, this will be different for AMD and Intel users, but if you're on NVIDIA, keep with me. On the Adjust Image Settings with Preview tab, set this to Use the Advanced 3D Settings and click Apply. Then take me there or click Manage 3D Settings on the far left. So starting from the very top, all of the anti-aliasing options are turned off. The only thing is Gamma Correction here, which should be turned on. Then scrolling down, all of these should be off. Background Application Max Frame Rate, for example, your browsers and things like that, you can the FPS while you're in games here should you wish. If you're a crazy performance nut, just close everything in the background and you get the same effect, if not better. DSR factors off, low latency mode, this you should set to on or even ultra, so I'll set it to ultra. Then max refresh rate, you can cap it here, but leaving it uncapped is good enough. Scrolling down further, shader cache size, set this to 10 gigabytes. It should improve gameplay performance even slightly. Anisotropic sampling, I'll leave on. Negative LOD bias, allow. Quality, set this to high performance. Texture filtering, leave this on on. Threaded optimization, auto. Triple buffering off VSync, change this from use the application setting to off. And everything else you can leave as is. Click apply, then click yes, and head across to change resolution. In here, select your monitor, then make sure you have one of the options under PC selected instead of Ultra HD, etc. up here. So, for example, the best resolution I can get on my screen is ultra wide or 2K. I'm recording at 2K, so that's why I have this selected. From the refresh rate, select the highest option you have here, or at least the highest compatible option. Then scroll all the way down and change this to use NVIDIA color settings. Change the output dynamic range to full from limited here and click apply. Then head across to adjust desktop color settings and here you can select the monitor once more, scroll down, and now you can adjust your digital vibrance to give your monitor much more color. Set this to around 75-ish, maybe even 80, and the game should look infinitely better. Do note that this does affect Windows and everything else, so if you do color accurate work, such as Photoshop, video editing, etc., remember you have this turned up way higher than you think. Then apply and head across to adjust video color settings. Here, you can change this to with NVIDIA settings, and you can raise the saturation here as well to maybe 60 or 70% too. Then we'll apply and get to tweaking windows for some super quick optimization. Once again, a much more in-depth one linked down in the description below. You'll also find the CTT, Ultimate Windows Utility. Click copy here next to this link and hit start, then type in terminal on Windows 11, otherwise PowerShell on Windows 10. Right click and run as administrator. If you open terminal, make sure it says PowerShell at the very top, otherwise click the drop down and choose PowerShell. Then simply right click to paste the command and hit enter. This will download and run the CTT tool. Head across to the tweaks tab at the very top, select desktop, and you can see what's ticked here. These are all of the options that will be disabled and customized. If you're not happy with any of these, make sure to tick or untick as you see fit. Then all you need to do is click run tweaks here. Then once everything is done, that's really it. You can see exactly what happened in the terminal window here. A whole bunch of work all automated for us. Sweet. Then finally, we'll actually head back to Steam, right click CSGO or CS2 in the future, click properties and under the general tab, scrolling down, launch options. There's a bunch of these that we can add here and these are the ones that I have set currently. I'll open up notepad, paste them in, you'll find these in the description down below. Some of these may change when CS2 to its fully released, but for the most part, Novid should skip the intro video, High should set high priority, you can set the number of threads that the game uses here, set the FPS max to zero, meaning that it's uncapped, as well as a bunch of client-side rules, tick rate options, which I'm pretty sure don't apply to CS2, but if you leave them in there and it's not available, it's not going to do anything anyway. Sets the frequency and refresh rate to 144. If you're using something different, change this, for example, 165. As such, it disables DirectX 9 mode, disables controller, and sets the max download size as 2 gigabytes for custom servers when they come in the future. Simply copying them into here, paste, and close it. Just like that, congratulations, we've now fully optimized CS2 for the best possible performance. You should notice a huge increase in performance and stability in gameplay. Thank you all for watching, my name is Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!